Hello! For some time I was beginning my movies with the sudden geomagnetic pulses which are being recorded at different stations around the planet. However, this time I have a small problem. Since the day in which I've uploaded the latest movie, there were no significant geomagnetic disturbances which would be worth to discuss. Of course, it doesn't mean that there were no pulses at all. During last week K-Index in Kiruna reached 6 points couple times, but those events became rather common in the changing environment of our planet. Space weather wasn't too active neither. Besides couple density spikes and small instabilities of magnetic orientation, solar wind was rather calm. Right now we're waiting for the impact of a CME, which was emitted during the last M-class solar flare which took place on the Earth-facing disk. And indeed, we can see some kind of impact on the ACE readings, however it doesn't look like a coronal mass ejection too much. For now the effect of recent solar activity can be seen on the energetic particles chart, where the amount of electrons started to grow slightly because of a small flux transfer event which was triggered by one of the eruptions. Strange that the protons seem to be unaffected for now. But I have to mention the most recent flare, which was stronger than previous ones, and reached the level of X1.8 class event. Notice as well the strange and spectacular plasma ejection, which took place slightly below the active region. Although the CME wasn't directed exactly towards Earth, there is a big chance that we will have a glancing blow in next couple days. This time the flare caused a visible grow of protons as well as electron flux. But let's go back to Earth as I want to talk about more serious stuff. The magnetosphere and disturbances of its behavior. I need to warn you that this part can be difficult for people who lack the basic knowledge about space weather interactions. In my previous movie I was showing you some oddities in the behavior of magnetospheric plasma, which created magnetic loops, just like on the sun. Disturbance which I will show you now is different and absolutely new for me. Those new SWMF plus RCM monitors are full of surprises. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it looks like the magnetotail which moved partially to the day side of our planet. Notice as well that this anomaly appeared only over the northern part of magnetosphere. Closed field lines are pushed north as well as a small stream of plasma which seems to be connected to an open field line. The problem is that a satellite didn't record at this time anything what could explain this disturbance. But let's look at other SWMF plus RCM monitors. Magnetopause position gives probably the best view of this anomaly. It seems that the sudden burst of particles was directed towards the sun and against the solar wind. Magnetopause was visibly pushed away from Earth, what caused an ugly bowshock deformation. But to leave you without any doubts, let's look at the plasma velocity vectors, especially the big one which appeared in front of magnetopause right at the time of anomaly, and which is clearly pointing away from Earth. Notice as well, that on the western part of magnetotail, density of plasma is bigger than on the east half. But what is even more important, 
Directions of plasma flow are opposite on both sides. Vectors are turning back in the western part, what creates a visible vortex between opposite plasma currents. I think that the pressure of plasma directed towards Earth managed to overcome the pressure of solar wind, what caused a reconnection between the plasma sphere and bow shock. This charge was strong enough to rip apart front of the bow shock. But let's look once more at the Y cut monitor, where we can see that the invert flow is probably caused by a positive field line, which punctured the northern lobe of magnetosphere and reached the neutral sheet placed in the middle of magnetotail. Of course, there is as well a field line with opposite polarity, directed out from Earth, which is connected on the opposite part of the globe. And this is how the field lines would look like from above. And this leaves us with a small problem. According to the basic laws of electromagnetism, magnetic field lines are supposed to be perpendicular to the velocity vectors of energetic particles. This is why the standard model of solar wind penetrating the magnetosphere looks like it looks. Particles enter ionosphere through the polar cusps. This situation can be explained only in two ways. First one, Sun is no longer at the end of dimensional axis X. Noon is no longer at 12 hour, but somewhere around 2 pm. Second option. Blue arrow represents the sum of magnetic vectors of the heliosphere and vectors of another field which is affecting our planet together with the entire solar system. The choice is yours. I will stay by the second option for a couple reasons. But before I will talk about them, I would like to show you recent ionosphere radar measurements from the Millstone station. As you can see on those images, there is a visible displacement of the area where ionosphere is gaining energy and the sun. But most important is probably the electron temperature monitor. Displacement is here visible better than on the rest of images, but what is most important is the fact that it shows clearly in which areas positive and negative field lines connect straight to our planet. By coincidence, the angle of displacement fits perfectly to the readings from ionospheric polar cap potential on ISWA. And what makes me really happy, it allows me to connect this data with the equatorial flux tubes, which can be quite often seen on the current ring monitors. But before I will continue, I need to tell once more about one of the main rules of the electromagnetic universe. Each connection between different fields has to be dipolar. Only then the exchange of energy can happen. Negative and positive particles will move in opposite directions until they won't nullify the differential. Amen. Of course, this is just a tiny part of this process. You need to keep in mind different energy levels. Negative particles are charged positively towards particles with stronger negative charge. Ok, now let's make it more complicated. Upper monitors show protons at 4,7 and 2,8 kN electro volts. Below are electrons at the same energy bands, only negative. Electrons and protons move in opposite directions. Protons rotate clockwise, electrons counterclockwise. But only until we're talking about the outward flow, which is visible as black arrows. Red arrows represent the inward flow, which of course has opposite direction. And because electromagnetic fields make connections using magnetic field lines, direction of plasma flow depends on the field line polarity. So, each of those tubes is made of negative and positive field lines, no matter if we talk about protons or electrons. Black arrow on the upper screen has the same direction as the red arrow on bottom monitor. Protons can move towards field which is dominated by negative electric charge. Difference of strength between opposite field lines in a single connection 
describes the polarity of entire connection. If the black arrow on upper monitors will be stronger than the red one, connection will be negative as a whole and particles will move out of the ionosphere. And now imagine that each of red and black field lines is made of another red and black field lines, which are dipolar as well. From cosmic tubes which suck out atmospheres of planets to electrons which make static discharges on your sweater. Welcome in the fractal universe. Anyway, those who watch my movies for some time should notice already that angles at which those flux tubes connect to our planet changed since the last time when I was talking about this subject. But the IMF is far too unstable to make any conclusions at this moment. By the way, BZ component dropped to minus 10 nanoteslas, what means that we should have a geomagnetic storm. But as for now, there is no visible response on ground magnetometer readings. Of course, I've mentioned the atmosphere for a good reason. I've compared the atomic oxygen monitor with the plasma outflows, which can be seen on SWMF plus RCM magnetosphere simulations, and it seems that there is a clear connection. During the time when the rate of outflow is increased, density of oxygen is clearly dropping. During the rare moments when magnetosphere is calm, density of atomic oxygen is growing back. Atomic oxygen is a product of O2 molecules ionization, which is caused by UV radiation. That's why the biggest density is visible on the day side of Earth. And this leaves us with another problem. There is no reason for those particles to stay on the night side. There is no source of ultraviolet light on the night sky, which would be strong enough to cause ionization of particles. Or maybe there is. Don't forget that less than a month ago, almost entire atomic oxygen moved to the shaded part of our planet. Ok, time to finish this lesson. For the end, take a look at the geographic coordinates of North Geomagnetic Pole. Last column shows the year. I think that there is no need to comment this data. And if you doubt that this shift is affecting our planet in any way, take a look at air currents. I wish you warm and safe Christmas. Class dismissed. Peace.